God bless you. So, today, we're going to go through a selection of verses, chapters, things that are needed for instruction, for strength, for us to remember. So, I would recommend a pen and paper, even if you don't watch this video. I will put these in the description as well. But just write these all down in your own personal notes that you can study these so that when you are in those days of trial and struggle you can remember these for these will be written on your heart and you'll be like well i'm in this peril i'm in this trouble but then this verse will come to mind and it will encourage it will strengthen it will help you and you'll be able to use this in your journey with god so let's begin so i brought out the trusty board which we haven't seen for a while because i've only recently been able to get some pens again so we shall get out the old trusty board and we shall begin now the first one's going to be john 14 verse 6 so in john 14 verse 6 what do we learn so this is what jesus says he says i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me so when we pray we pray in jesus name and we know that jesus is the way he is the truth and he is the life now We build our relationship with God through Jesus. We seek God wholeheartedly that he will guide, strengthen and show us what way to go. As we grow in our faith, we build a relationship through prayer, through praise, through rejoicing and trusting in God, building that relationship, understanding the will of God. What do we seek? Well, Let's go back into Matthew. And in Matthew, we're going to go to chapter 6. Now in chapter 6 of Matthew, this is the Sermon on the Mount, which is a very important selection, which is chapters 5 through to 7. You should study those intently. But specifically this verse to remember in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Now this verse is... But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. So always seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. For we can't trust in ourselves. We always get things wrong. That's why we need God. That's why as Jesus says he is the good shepherd. And in Psalm 23 with the good shepherd he helps me in all these different ways and we in all our different struggles we are like sheep needing tending in all these different ways for we are always struggling in various trials various problems and it's only when we surrender ourselves to god that all our worries fall away so seeking god's kingdom and his righteousness and what is it to seek that kingdom it's that we want his kingdom to be on earth. For his will to be done on earth. For all that we know now would all be gone. Everything that we are used to and all these things will be done away with. For God's kingdom to be as it was meant to be. Now, as we continue on, Matthew chapter 11 for what do we do when things are difficult and we feel we know not what to do well what did jesus tell us come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, 
Learn from Jesus. He is the template, the example we all follow. And when we are struggling, it says, when you are heavy laden, come to Jesus and he'll give you rest. Help me, I'm struggling. I need your help. I can't do this alone. I can't get through this struggle without you. Always seeking God to help you every step of the way. Now, learning from Jesus, for his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. So as we continue on. We next have what the greatest commands are. And these should all be written within our hearts. We're going to Matthew 22. Verses 36 to 40. So in Matthew 22. And in verse 36. So, teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So loving God with all your heart and strength and mind. Loving one another as your neighbor. Love one another as yourself. Do unto others as you would do unto yourself. Living in love. So, we learn these are the most important things to love. Loving God and loving each other. If you would do no wrong to yourself, so why would you do wrong to another? You would want no ill will nor any suffering or struggling yourself, so why would you allow anyone else to go through the same? Body of Christ, we are all one body. If one suffers, we all suffer. If one rejoices, we all rejoice together. That's why we live in love. Now, we're going to go back into Ezekiel. And in Ezekiel, we're going to look at verse 36, 25 to 27. Now, in 36, at verse 25, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. These things, baptism, washing clean in water, taking away all the wickedness, all the filthiness, being cleansed of it all. And from here, a new heart, a loving heart, not a stony heart. For a stony heart does not care, does not have compassion. But with that loving, fleshy heart, full of love. And God's statutes and his judgments that we follow them through his spirit. We know through baptism, the Holy Spirit. And from here we go to Matthew and we're going to go to chapter 28. And in 28, it's 18 to 20. What do we learn from Jesus at this point? And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. 
And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. These are Jesus' commands. So, preaching his word, being baptized, receiving the Holy Spirit, observing all that he commands. And then again, as we continue in these understandings, what does it tell us at the end of Mark chapter 16? Verses 15 and 16. We will see. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. So those that believe will be baptized and saved. Get baptized. Look throughout the other books, just like in Acts, and they were baptized for the remission of sins in the name of Jesus Christ. As we continue through Luke chapter 24, what do we learn from Jesus here? That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Repentance and remission of sins. We need to repent when we sin. Turn from all wickedness. Learn and abide in Christ. Next, we go to John. And what command does Jesus give us in John? In chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Now, what did Jesus do? He gave his life for our sins. He took our punishment. He died for us. He picked up his cross and suffered for us. He shed his blood for us. Love one another as I have loved you. He selflessly helped all people. He had compassion on the 5,000. He fed them. Not only that, they helped the poor. He helped the sick. He helped the lame. He helped the blind to see. He preached the word to all. He taught to all. He helped all. He was humble, loving and gentle. He did not put himself on a pedestal, nor was he proud or haughty. He is an example for all to live as the light. And walk in it. For he is the way, the truth and the life. So. From here we'll go back to Proverbs. Because we always have to stay in that humility. Don't lose the humility. In verse. It's going to be chapter 3. Verses 5 to 7. So in Proverbs 3. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. For the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So remember these verses. Remember there are things that may seem good in our own lies, but they lead to death. So don't lean on your own understanding, but seek God to straighten your path. Humbly, earnestly, praying to God to help you see the way forward. Next, we have Ezekiel chapter 33. Now, Ezekiel specifically in chapter 33, we learn about the man who is righteous, but then when he goes into wickedness, And the wicked person that turns from his wicked ways. God's saying that this person that was once wicked stops being wicked. He will live. But the person that was being righteous and then he turns to wickedness. Then he will die. And all his good will be forgotten. Because he chose wickedness. He decided to be wicked intentionally. Whereas the wicked person was lost in his wickedness. Realized where his wickedness was sending him. 
So he stopped and turned from his wicked ways. And it's that understanding that helps us grow from turning from that wickedness. Taking heed of what God warns us of. Which is why Jesus came for a mission of sins. For us to turn from the wickedness. To pick up our cross and follow him. Now, as we continue on. I do recommend you read all of chapter 33 of Ezekiel. Because you'll also learn about when you warn someone as the watchman. If they don't listen, their blood be on their own head. But if you choose not to warn them. And then they die. And you will be held accountable. Preaching the word of God to all that we can. While we can. Because we can. We choose if we do or don't. It's why we share what we can. We don't hide our faith. But we shout it on the rooftops. That all may hear and come to Christ. Now Ephesians. For our struggle. That we can endure and persevere. And overcome. So now I believe I need to lift this up a little bit. There we go. I kind of came prepared. There we are. Balance and act. So let's find something else. That'll do. Alright, so we now need to go to Ephesians chapter 6. And in Ephesians chapter 6, we are going to be in verses 10 to 20. Because it's our spiritual armour that we will require. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak. So putting on your spiritual armour, for there is wickedness abound in this world. We need to be prepared We need to be ready as a soldier in Christ. If we can endure, persevere and overcome all that struggle. Now, from Ephesians, putting on that armour so we can endure the wicked ways of the enemy. When he tries to attack us in different ways, we know we can persevere. We know we can overcome. We know we have God by our side now as much as I love the verse within it is the whole chapter we shall read so we shall read Psalm 91 and in Psalm 91 we shall begin he you who live in the secret place of Elyon spend your nights in the shelter of Shaddai Saying to Yahweh, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He rescues you from the snare of the fowler set on destruction. He covers you with his pinions. You find shelter under his wings. His constancy is shield and protection. 
you need not fear the terrors of night, the arrow that flies in the daytime, the plague that stalks in the darkness, the scourge that wreaks havoc at high noon. Though a thousand fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, you yourself will remain unscathed. You have only to keep your eyes open to see how the wicked are repaid. You who say Yahweh my refuge and make Elyon your fortress. No disaster can overtake you. No plague come near your tent. He has given his angels orders about you to guard you wherever you go. They will carry you in their arms in case you trip over a stone. You will walk upon wild beasts and adder. You will trample young lions and snakes. Since he clings to me, I rescue him. I raise him high, since he acknowledges my name. He calls to me and I answer him. In distress, I am at his side. I rescue him and bring him honor. I shall satisfy him with long life and grant him to see my salvation. No matter the fear, the worries we go through, God is our refuge. He is our shelter. He is our fortress. He is our strong arm and our safety. We will abide and trust in him to get us through all those hardships. Praying Ephesians and Psalm 91 and Psalm 23 to get us through in those times of true struggle. He is always faithful and just. To deliver us. Now Psalm 23 we shall now read. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is there every step of the way every stage helping you in every piece of your life you will not want when you trust in God you will not worry you will not fear for he is with you guiding you every step of the way put your faith put your trust in our father in heaven now what do we do if we know we've made a mistake we've done a wrong we repent we confess, we tell God our wrongs, we ask for his forgiveness. So we shall go to 1 John chapter 1. And in 1 John, I can't see so clearly. There we go. I'm going to read verse 9. If... We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sorry. So if we get things wrong, we can confess our sins, tell our wrongdoings. And when we do something we know that is wrong, we take our time and stop and go, God, I got this wrong. Help. Forgive me for what I have done. I mean not to do it. Lead me in your paths of righteousness. Remove from me temptations and desires that are not fitting. Remould me as pleasing clay and not displeasing clay. That I may be a joy in your eyes and not a lament. Guide and lead me in ways that are right in your eyes and not my own. Your will be done in my life seeking God to guide us every step of the way and finally Philippians 
and in Philippians we're going to go to chapter 2 it's going to be from verse 9 therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God, of God the Father. So, Jesus' name is above every name. He has all authority on heaven and on earth, that all should bow. You can trust in that name when you are in spiritual warfare and attack. Do not fear. Trust in God for your salvation. But do not become complacent. So work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Being humble and earnest. That God may ever refine you in your journey with him. This is a list of verses. That I would recommend to learn. To help you. So when you feel struggle. For there will come a time for the world is removing these laws. From this book. This book is being hated by many, for as Jesus warned in Matthew 24, you will be hated by all nations on account of my name. Not some, not most, not the old one, but all. And nation upon nation is removing this book. They do not like what is taught in it. Because there are those that are prideful, full of pride. And they are trying to install their will all over the earth in every way, shape and form to enforce their will upon others. So, I pray that you take all these verses, learn them and study them to give you strength, to build that relationship with God, to find peace and joy in his words, to learn and grow in Christ. For there will be a time where they will shut down everything and nothing of the word will be findable to hear it. They will remove it all. No app, no channel will be allowed. Anything spoken will be heard. So be as wise as serpents and innocent and doves as you speak. But be brave and courageous to speak as boldly as you ought to. Trust in God every step of the way. Seek his guidance. I pray that this will help you in your journey. God bless you all.